Hi, Oliver Mogisi, employed by DNV, representing NACE and the Pipeline Standard Developing Organization and Coordination Council. <laughs> um, I, I guess I, I don't mean to, to bring us back, but I didn't want to let this go about the uh, uh, technology and using um, older standards. I mean, for me, this the, the 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 best part about using standards that are developed by organizations that contain the most up-to-date technology, that contain the experts that that know this technology better than anybody else in the world, is that we have uh, that operators have the ability to incorporate present technology, that they have the flexibility to incorporate um, different kinds of technology, and that newly developed research can enter into a uh, um, into the operation of, of pipeline so that we can use it so that we can improve the safety as fast as possible. That's something that uh, I, I really disagree with, that we can just use old standards and not incorporate newly developed technology into them. Uh, the, the other thing I wanted to uh, address, going maybe even even back a little further, I apologize for that, is that uh, the, the core idea about, you know, some standard development organizations are fine with this. You, you know, even, even NACE um, doesn't really, uh, doesn't depend upon heavily on, on, on uh, revenue from standards. Um, however, I mean, the only common thread that I see in associations in terms of their business model, and, and, and they are businesses, despite being non-for-profit and 501c3s or c6s, um, that you charge somebody to be a member, you use those members and their intellectual property to develop products, and then you sell them back to them. It's a crazy business model in some, in some way, right? It's, it's, you can't imagine how that, that, that it would work. Um, somebody in a business school probably needs to make a dissertation about it. But uh, more than that, they're all different. So some rely heavily and can't survive without the revenue stream from the standards. So you're destroying a business. By, by requiring them to be available for free. Um, others, it doesn't matter, and, and they're all over the map in terms of how the, the twists and how they implement this, this basically um, strange business model. Um, so I wouldn't say that you can use one association to draw a conclusion about another. I, I don't think any of us disagree with that. The question is whether there is any business model that can't be changed. And that's the suggestion that David, I think, made this morning. And, and I, you know, I'd like to hear people talk about that. I, I don't know whether there are business models that can't change. I've heard some very, very strong arguments about why the current business model is the best one. But if we have to live under this standard and the choice is to not use those, those standards anymore, even though they may be the best in the world, is, is that company going to have any incentive to change, that, that, that SDO going to have any incentive to change its business practices so that we would be encouraged to continue incorporating their standards? We can't do it unless we violate their copyright. So, and I'd like to hear others on that because we, we've heard some very strong arguments about the benefits of the business model, but I, I'd like to hear about whether it can be changed. And I realize we can't just go on what one organization has done especially since they're not sure yet that it is going to continue to bring them in enough revenue. Uh, Dave Carmel from the International Code Council. I, I, we